Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Rupa Subramania show. I am Rupa Subramania. I hope you're all doing well wherever you're tuning in from and that hopefully nicer weather has arrived uh, wherever you are. Now, last year, a high school student, Josh Alexander from Renfrew, Ontario, made news headlines for protesting his school's policy of using gendered washrooms based on self-identification and not based on one's biological gender. Being uncomfortable with the fact that boys were using girls' washrooms and many girls in the high school telling him they felt unsafe, he protested and was suspended by the school and barred from attending school. Joining me today to talk about how the trans issue is unfolding in our high schools, please welcome Josh Alexander. Hey Josh, uh, welcome uh, to the show. Uh, it's great to have you here. Uh, let me uh, just begin by asking you to tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, what exactly happened that led to your suspension uh, from your high school? Just walk us through um, the series of events that took place that led to your eventual suspension. Yeah, so I'm a 17-year-old student uh, currently enrolled at the St. Joseph's Catholic High School in Renfrew, Ontario. Um, I had previously been in the public board where I had done some activism regarding the mandates and the online learning and that. We had done some uh, protests, uh, myself and my crew from Safe Canada, um, regarding, uh, well, like in opposition to the mandates and uh, in solidarity with the Freedom Convoy. Anyways, uh, that caused some drama in the board. There's cops involved. The uh, We were getting suspended left, right, and center um, simply for our public stance. And uh, we, I decided to finish up my year. Um, and uh, I, I graduated grade 10 successfully and decided to just have a bit of a, uh, a smoother end of my education. And that's why I enrolled in the Catholic board um, this grade 11. However, not long into my time there, some female students approached me and uh, informed me that males were using their washrooms. They were concerned about this. Um, I brought this concern to the principals and the administrators, and it wasn't taken very seriously. Um, they, another female student did the same, and uh, in, at the end of the day, um, I decided the best way to uh, make them a little more open to discussing this with us would be to put it on the media. And uh, so we organized a protest, it went on the news, um, and they decided to suspend me. Um, and uh, I mean, my lawyers got involved, there was no justification for the suspension, they didn't even want to release allegations against me. And eventually, uh, they said I could return, um, but I was permanently banned from math class, religion class, and also banned from speaking to certain students. So uh, I didn't comply with that I said I would attend class and they gave me an exclusion order um, which is now in effect um, they also gave me a trespassing notice I waited all of that out um, and uh, I was scheduled to return once again at the end of the semester I'd failed four classes missed all that um, but I, I was finally scheduled to return it was agreed upon and uh I told them I'm returning to class. I'll continue to adhere to my religious beliefs. And uh, that's where it's at. And uh, they informed me that I was to be excluded for the remainder of the year. Um, and uh, I, at this point, I still um, have no reason to believe I'll be welcomed back next year either. But uh, I felt by complying with that discriminatory exclusion order, I'd be condoning it. And I decided to attend class. Um, in response to my decision, the school ended up calling the uh, police and I was arrested and charged. Wow, that's, uh, that's incredible. So tell me, um, you know, listening to what you're, what you've been saying, uh, it sounds like the school was, was basically treating you like some hardened criminal. Uh, you know, why do you think your school went to such extraordinary lengths uh, to bar you from school, from uh, preventing you from, you know, being even being on school grounds? Uh, you know, what what is it that uh, set them off to such an extent that they, you know, that they were treating you this way? Well, I think it I, I personally believe it goes beyond the school. Um, obviously, this was a very public uh, incident. And uh, I mean, any young person with influence that's opposing the mainstream narrative is obviously a threat. 
and uh, they want to make an example out of me. So they've been very hostile and they've done everything they can to discourage other students from taking a similar stance to the stance I took. And uh, I guess they're going to continue to do that. And it's now, like I said, it's, it's beyond just my school. It's left my board and it's now affecting my family who are teachers in the uh, public education system as well. Yeah, uh, we'll get to your family in just a little bit. Um, what do you think is going to happen next? I mean, you're not uh, allowed to attend school. Uh, uh, and so what, what do you plan on doing? Like, can you go to another school? Or I mean, is that is that an option for you? Uh, I mean, I'm assuming you do want to finish high school. Um, yeah, so I had actually I withdrawn from parental control in order to appeal the disciplinary decisions made by the school. Okay. And uh, I was, well, it, this went, um, the school refused to accept my uh, withdrawal, and this ended up going to the Ontario Court of Appeal. I had my first date back on, I believe it was April 27th, um, and they ended up adjourning it to uh, June 5th. So on uh, June 5th, I uh, will again, I, I believe I'll be scheduled to uh, go back into the Court of Appeal and we'll try to work that out with the school. And if we're successful there, I'll, I will be able to go ahead um, and uh, appeal this and maybe start to, uh, well, hopefully withdraw that exclusion order, which would have enabled me to attend class again. Um, However, I, my, my hopes for that are fairly low at this point, and uh, we'll have to decide whether we're going to continue with that uh, appeal. Um, but I, uh, I also have the option, or there's, there's a possibility that I could attempt to withdraw from the school board and go into the, back into the public board. However, um, since the school's refusing to recognize that I have withdrawn from parental control, I don't know if they'd accept it if I asked to be uh, withdrawn and uh, unenrolled and enrolled in the public board. I don't know how all that would work out, but we're looking at all the options right now. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, as a young person, I mean, you're only 17. Uh, what is your uh, sense uh, on where people your age are on this whole trans issue? Uh, uh, you know, are most uh, people your age towing this uh, woke progressive view? Or do you find a lot of people are agreeing with you? It honestly depends on the student, the environment, um, and the influencers. But uh, I would say that students in general are more so distracted by the vices that are pro provided by our system. Um, whether they actually care or hold views on these topics is often left unknown. Um, there are, I do get a lot of support from students who have just had enough of it and are fed up. But at the same time, you have, like I said, vices and you got kids that are just they've grown up with everything at their fingertips, whether it be video games, social media, pornography, um, uh, movies, all this stuff that just captivates the mind and distracts it. Um, and uh, so, I mean, our generation doesn't have uh, doesn't have much um, motive in it. It's just numbed by uh, distractions and pleasure. So I think we will start to see a, a turn soon where people start to wake up and go, okay, this isn't actually providing me true happiness. Um, and they'll start to look at the, the people that encourage this kind of behavior and mm. uh, even indoctrinated while they were in that uh, almost trance. But uh, yeah, I, I'm, I, I see some support where I go, um, like I went to the York Mills uh, Collegiate Institute and we received a lot of support there. That was our first visit out and our only visit outside of uh, a high school that we attended. Um, we'll probably be doing some more of that um, later. I hope to be going to Alberta at some point this month to visit some schools there. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll soon be able to engage the student support. Yeah, at your own school, what was the level of support that you received? Um, you know, did uh, uh, a whole bunch of, uh, I mean, I don't know uh, how many people attend that school, but, you know, did people show up in solidarity with you? Uh, or did most people just sit on the sidelines? Uh, you know, what, wh how did, you, how were you able to gauge that the support back then? Um, there, more and more I hear from students and parents that do support me. Um, mm -hmm. They're just afraid. Uh, like I was saying earlier, they're doing their best to uh, discourage anybody who has 
similar uh, views to mine. Um, and like they've, these students have now watched me leave the school in the back of a cop car. Um, they've watched me get removed from class since November. And uh, it's, uh, it's obviously concerning for them to see that happen. And a lot of it, unfortunately, um, the situation for a lot of students is that their parents won't support them. And uh, I mean, that's the worst thing a parent can do. If your student wants to stand up and is willing to face the consequences and take the risk of, um, of being a, a, a kid with morals in our society these days, you should be encouraging that, allowing that um, and having their back. But unfortunately, that's often not the case. Uh, what is, uh, what's the role of teachers and guidance counselors um, at a school like yours? Uh, what, what are they doing? What are they telling the, the kids at the school? Uh, you know, what's the kind of messaging that is coming out, uh, uh, you know, via the teachers and guidance counselors? Yeah, well, their, their role certainly should be to teach and to guide. But unfortunately, it's been more recently um, common for them to indoctrinate and confuse and uh, like I've uh, I've had teachers, you know, they're they're promoting and defending male breastfeeding, um, and then they're telling you that there's upwards of seventy three genders, and you can be whatever you want to be, and uh, they'll they'll try to confuse, you know, the they'll, they'll talk about the difference between gender and sex, and uh, just confuse kids. Um, whereas I come around with a more um, basic statement just saying god great male and female and i can provide scripture to back it um but uh, unfortunately that's considered bullying in our uh, in our society mm. uh, you know i find it very bizarre that uh, you were treated the way you were i mean for a whole range of re- uh, reasons um but you were in the catholic school system which by definition should be committed to a core set of uh, christian values uh, I believe you yourself are a devout Christian. Um, does it seem strange to you that in our religious school system in Ontario, they seem to be taking such a um, such an extreme woke view that doesn't conform uh, at all with mainstream Christian thinking on this topic? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it honestly doesn't surprise me at this point. It, it disappoints me, but uh... I know that the Catholic board is merely pandering for public funding and they've thrown out all of their morals and values um, and they will do anything to um, continue bringing that money in. Uh, it doesn't surprise me, but um, it, it's the Catholic church ought to be ashamed and uh, start to disown the Catholic school board um, if they refuse to stand for Catholic values. And this is, I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a student who's not even Catholic. I'm a, I'm a born again Christian, um, but I, I'm going in there and it certainly leaves a pretty bad uh, testimony for the Catholics when that's what I, that's my experience and with two months spent around Catholics. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you tweeted uh, recently that uh, uh, your parents, uh, who are both school teachers, I believe, have been suspended. Um, and um, I, I, can you tell us, explain to us what happened to them? Uh, why were they suspended? Uh, was it was it because of your activism in the space? Um... Yeah, um, so approximately two weeks ago, we learned that my dad had been uh, put on leave and uh, put under investigation. Um, there was There has been no specific reason given for that, uh, and uh, we'll probably figure out more. Um, in the time to come, but uh, up until this point, we don't really know why that happened. I obviously have my assumptions, and I think it's pretty obvious that it has to do with his relation to me, given that he's my father. Um, and then uh, just this past Friday, I was about to go up and give a speech at the Great Canadian Awakening, and uh, I was informed over the phone that my uh, mother had also been uh, removed from the classroom and placed under investigation. Um, there what happened there is uh somebody went to her uh classroom and put a pride flag on the door of her kindergarten class um she uh was not asked for approval for any of this came as a surprise to her she removed the flag um and she was uh ended up having a conversation with the superintendent who informed her that in order to protect the children they'd have to put my mom under investigation and remove her from the class extraordinary 
And uh, do you, I, I know you can't speak for your parents, but do you know how they're going to um, um, fight this? At this point, uh, it, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty fresh case. I don't really know what we're going to do yet. We're looking at all the options. Um, I'm sure there will be some more information to come from this. Yeah, uh, you've been you've been critical of uh, the new conservative le leader Pierre Polyev for remaining silent on the trans issue. Um, I I recently wrote about um, um, you know in my re recent uh, and uh, National Post column I wrote. Um, that, um, you know, I think the conservatives, uh, for them, this was a real missed opportunity to stand up for uh, core small C conservative values, which uh, basically at this point leaves the field open for the woke narrative coming from both the NDP and the liberals. Do you agree that the conservative party is making a huge mistake here and needs to get engaged with this issue? Um, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I had... I never really shared my view on that until I had an opportunity to speak directly with uh, Mr. Polyev. Um, I wanted to hear his side and uh, meet him. And uh, so that's what I did. And uh, I mean, I can't say I'm impressed. Uh, what, a, what a politician says behind closed doors um, is means nothing. And uh, I don't care if, if they believe the right things. Um, they have to be willing to publicly say it, even in the in the face of controversy and uh i haven't seen that from the conservative party i know they're well aware of the issues that in our education system right now they won't speak against it and uh to be honest i think canadians are sick of hearing about price of milk um there's there's other issues going on right now about how like i mean every kid goes in and buys their carton of milk before class but uh, i don't think that's the parents biggest concerns um when they're entering a woke um indoctrination facility every day and uh so i i think that i would strongly encourage the conservative party to start to speak out against the uh the radical gender ideology that's being pushed in our education system and uh focus on the problems that matter to the the youth of canada the the future of canada um and uh so far i haven't seen any of that yeah, uh, I mean, you've uh, criticized them uh, for not, uh, uh, you know, for, for not taking a position here. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you could tell me, what is the general sense you get interacting with uh, uh, members of the Conservative Party when you when you speak to them behind closed doors? Do they generally seem very supportive of, uh, of your activism and of where you're coming from? Uh, some of them do, some of them will snob me. It depends. I mean, I'm sure a lot of them are afraid to speak to me about this because I've been very public on my stance on the Conservative Party and I don't necessarily blame them for that. I, I just speak my mind on the issue. Mm. Um, and uh, I'm still open and to and willing to talk to any, uh, not just Conservative Party, any, any uh, elected uh, representative about this issue. I believe it's an important topic and we need to start having conversations um with with respect and uh concern and uh i'm so yeah I'm, I'm totally open to this yeah i mean you've certainly um um you know pointed to the fact that maxime bernier of the people's party of canada has supported you and he's i would say has been pretty consistent on this uh in opposing um the use of uh, uh gendered washrooms and um you know for for trans people um and uh, do you are you or are, are you happy with that support that you've received from uh, Bernier? Yeah, I mean, I, I to be honest, I was I guess I would have been maybe fourteen years old. I was I was a fan of Pierre Polyev. I enjoyed watching his uh, his work in Parliament, and I uh, had a lot of respect for him. But then when I started to watch these uh, mandates and restrictions come into play, and uh, I noticed that nobody in the Conservative Party would speak out against it. Um, it was concerning. And uh, Maxime Bernier is somebody that would have been introduced to me around grade, my grade eight year. And uh, I liked what he had to say. I mean, I didn't really know too much about it. I was in grade eight. I didn't follow all this stuff too closely. But over time, I started to realize that this guy is actually speaking out about the, the problems and the issues that matter to me and a lot of uh, Canadians and a lot of my peers. And uh, more and more he's spoken out and been consistent and uh pierre polyev has just started catering more so to a uh, mainstream narrative 
And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I must say, I'm quite impressed with Maxime Bernier. And uh, as of right now, he certainly has my support for uh, candidacy. Yeah. Well, um, you know, you said something very um, interesting uh, at the beginning, beginning of the show. Uh, you said, you know, anybody who goes against this mainstream narrative gets canceled. Uh, you're only 17. Um, and um, is that, um, you know, um, unique to you or is that increasingly happening uh, for uh, for people your age where, you know, they challenge uh, this sort of this uh, mainstream narrative and then they find themselves shunned and criticized and denigrated and eventually canceled. Yeah, obviously my case is a little bit peculiar compared to the average student in Canada. Um, but yeah, I've watched it many times. Uh, there, there's often a negative response from both staff and students in the education system when a student uh, expresses beliefs contrary to the mainstream narrative. And uh, I mean, I, I, it doesn't necessarily bother me, but I've also just learned to have thick skin and go about my business. But for, for the average student, um, I mean, they're looking at getting a girlfriend, getting a relationship, having a job, um, often uh, fighting for good grades. And uh, it, like it or not, it, it will affect your grades. It will affect your popularity, as they called in the school. Um, and uh, it affects your chances of getting in a relationship, whether that's a relationship you want to be in, that's debatable. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it certainly affects most students and it certainly hinders them from speaking out. Yeah, I mean, you're at the heart of this uh, trans issue. Um, um, you know, you're as, as a young person, um, how hopeful are you about the future? How hopeful are you about change? Um, uh, change as you define it yeah i mean i i believe it's all in god's hands at this point um i uh i'm i'm impressed with the uh with what at least what i see in the future um students are more and more every day are coming to me and uh they're 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 expressing their concerns and expressing their support and uh some i mean this these weren't issues that were on the media before and at this point it's it's uh it's very common and everybody's aware of it um we've raised a lot of awareness and not just myself uh but like you look at guys like billboard chris and uh i mean this has been going on for quite some time and it's nice to finally see a bit of a uh, reaction from it yeah well speaking of billboard chris um i believe you're going to be in ottawa in june with billboard chris uh chris uh elston um also known as billboard chris uh can you tell us a little bit about that event uh what should people expect is it a protest and uh where is it happening yeah um so we are going to be in uh, nepean ottawa um and we'll be on uh, i believe it was carling and broadview um, there's several schools there, so all are welcome. The community members are welcome. I know there's been uh, some calls for counter protesters from, uh, well, there was Faye Johnson, some NDP members. Um, but I mean, we'll see what happens. Uh, the police are in contact with me. We're working together quite well. Um, hopefully, it all goes well. And uh, yeah, I'd encourage everybody to come out on June 9th and just. Uh, we're, I mean, we're there. We're there to talk and to uh, hear from students, and uh, also openly express our um, not so popular opinions. Well, um, it's extraordinary that you, at your age, uh, have uh, you know displayed this incredible amount of courage, uh, where most people uh, are just cowardly, in my opinion. Um, you know, they're afraid to say these things pub uh, in public, but here you are uh, suspended from school and you continue speaking up. Uh, what gives you what gives you the courage to uh, go, uh, you know, to do this? What motivates you and what inspires you? Well, I mean, courage of conviction isn't something that gets talked about a lot today because you often don't need courage to express the ideas that most people are expressing in our culture. Um, but uh, yeah, I know I know that God's got my back. I know that I'm doing the right thing, and it, and I'm uh, I'm honored and it to have the privilege to be able to represent the truth in a time like this. And uh, it's it's also quite encouraging to be able to uh, give the gospel while doing it. Okay, well, um, I wish you all the best, Josh. 
uh, with your activism and I will be sure to uh, be in Ottawa for your event in June. Uh, I know a lot of people are excited and uh, looking forward to meeting you, uh, people who haven't, uh, uh, who've heard a lot of stuff about you but they you know they're really uh, uh, looking forward to seeing you uh, in person and and billboard chris of course and uh, thank you for coming on the show uh, and uh, and again you know i commend your courage and i wish you all the best and hopefully you'll be back on the show uh, soon perhaps in june thank you for having me on eh all right yeah no worries you take care yeah you too god bless